Hi, this is uh, Jeff Kermans, one of the interventional fellows at Beaumont. Uh, we have a case uh, to present today with uh, the use of infraredics and how it changed our management. Uh, the patient's a 56-year-old male who has no known significant uh, medical history who presented to our emergency room uh, complaining of angina, and he was diagnosed with a non-ST uh, elevation myocardial infarction with a peak troponin of 0.84. Uh, as part of an early invasive strategy, he was brought to the cath lab soon after uh, presentation. Initial angiography was performed from a right radial approach using a six French uh, system. And as you can see by the arrow here, uh, we see a very significant uh, lesion in the proximal LED. Uh, but it was unclear exactly uh, how far this lesion extended, both proximally and distally. Uh, you can see it arises uh, at the takeoff of a pretty sizable diagonal branch and there was concern that it may have extended back into the left main. Therefore, we decided to proceed with uh, uh, Nears Ivis. And this showed a very interesting result. As you can see in the uh, bottom right hand uh, corner of the screen, the uh, lesion is, is, uh, has a very large uh, plaque burden um, and it extends all the way back into the left main. So our initial strategy was going to be to spot stent uh, the severe lesion, but here clearly by the uh, Nears Ivis imaging, we know that the lesion extends back to the uh, true ostium of the LED and actually involves some of the left main. Uh, therefore, we decided to uh, change our stent strategy to a slightly longer uh, stent to place it uh, closer to the ostium of the LED. There was also concern of uh, a thrombus burden angiographically, and uh, this was confirmed by the high uh, lipid core burden index. So therefore, we did perform uh, aspiration thrombectomy. However, we did, not res uh, we did not have return of any significant amount of material, and we proceeded with an initial balloon inflation with an undersized balloon, uh, which was 2.5 by 12 millimeters. Right after the balloon infl inflation, uh, the patient developed uh, transient ST elevations in the anterior leads and complained of some mild chest discomfort. Uh, the Nears Ivis catheter was reintroduced. It was very interesting to see that our lipid core burden index had actually dropped from 875 to 465. Uh, our theory was that the uh, thrombus and plaque burden had actually uh, migrated distally into the distal LED after our balloon inflation, although some of it may have been uh, reduced due to aspiration thrombectomy. But as I had mentioned previously, we really didn't get uh, much material uh, back from our aspiration catheter. Uh, these uh, transient ST elevations were treated with uh, intracoronary uh, nitroglycerin and uh, resolved fairly promptly and there was no significant uh, cessation of flow into the LED, and we proceeded to um, stent with a 3.5 by 20 millimeter drug eluting stent. And as I indicated previously, and as you can see angiographically, we positioned the stent at the true ostium of the LED uh, slightly further back than we would have originally. We felt that th there was an excellent angiographic result after we post dilated with a uh, 4 -0 balloon, and we were very happy with this result. So in conclusion, we felt that the use of Nears Ivis significantly altered uh, our treatment of this patient and that it, it clearly demonstrated that the lesion extended more proximally than anticipated by angiography alone uh, and caused us to uh, stent up to the true ostium of the LAD. Uh, it's also our theory that the reduction in lipid core burden index may be related to distal embolization of thrombus into the LED, which was evidenced clinically by the transient ST elevations that the patient experienced. Although this may be due to aspiration thrombectomy, the lack of return of any significant amount of material suggests that the distal embolization and reduction of uh, lipid burden index was more likely related to balloon angioplasty. This raises the concern that distal embolization may be more likely to occur with a dramatically elevated lipid core burden index.